Hello everyone. As indicated in the previous video where we have done the drafting of the polo collar and we had cut the draft pieces. So here you can see that we are using the cut templates of the front and the back to do the cutting and the stitching of the polo collar. So here this is the back template. As you can see I have placed it on the selvage. This is a double layer fabric and I have placed it here. If you can notice it clearly this is where the selvage is and I have placed it right at the edge. Likewise this is the front block and if you can see this is a folded edge of the fabric and as indicated on the draft piece it is supposed to be placed FOC which is fold on cloth. So I have placed the pieces side by side on the same width of the fabric. As far as the seam allowances are concerned since we are only making this as a sample for the template so which is why I have left a seam allowance of one centimeter along the neck and one centimeter along the shoulder. Same at the back one centimeter at the shoulder and one at the neck. This is the only seam allowance that you need to add. There will be no seam allowance along the side and the hem of the template. Let's cut it. So here as you can see I've done the cutting of the pieces as we had indicated in the previous step and after doing the cutting now what we are going to do is we are going to separate out the two pieces of the back and we are going to place it in line with the shoulders of the front. Now when we are doing that we need to remember that we had a distinct facing piece in the back of the garment we had a crossing and facing so what I have done is I have just folded inside the three centimeter fabric which was meant for the facing now I am going to align the back pieces along with the front piece and we will start the sewing now for the first thing to be stitched we are going to stitch the shoulders together with the help of French seam so how exactly is French seam done we do the first stitching right side facing right side then we trim turn and then we stitch again at 0.5 so this is what is my first alignment the right side of the fabric is outside as you can see the folding of the facing the facing has gone in so this is the wrong side outer side is going to be the right side so I'm holding both the pieces right side outside and I am going to stitch it at 0.5 centimeter distance. I am using a contrast colored thread for better visibility in the video but please remember to use a matching thread when you sew your project. So here you can see I have done the first stitching for the French seam and I am going to trim this seam turn it around and then stitch it again at 0 0.5 centimeters. Let's cut. Let's repeat on the other side. Let's press this and turn it around inside out and then complete our French seam. So here the folding has been done. Do a second stitching line here at 0.5 centimeter distance. All right. So here we've completed our French seam and the template is ready to get moving to the next step. Now before we move on to the collar piece, we need to complete L machining. Now at times L machining can be taken as the first step of sewing and then move on to the French seam. But at times students do get confused with the right side and the wrong side and hence muddle up. Which is why I have done the French seam at the shoulders first. Now just take note of this. This is where your French seam is. So this is the wrong side of the garment. The facing is supposed to be turned onto the wrong side of the garment. Now we need to finish the top edge of the facing before we attach the collar to it. So to do that we must do something which is known as a L machining. Now how do you do your L machining? I am opening the facing, 
turning it to the right side. So here you cannot see the seam. This is the right side of the fabric and I am turning the fabric, the facing fabric on the right side. Now I am very easily, I am just going to mark the distance where I need to do the L machining. Please pay attention. Now I am marking with ink. Please remember to mark with a tailor's chalk because we are using a pen only for the purpose of the video. Come down by one centimeter distance. Now this one centimeter distance is taken because that is exactly what is your seam allowance. Move in by 1.5 centimeters and mark a line. So by 1.5 centimeters, that is the distance of your crossing. So what we are doing is we are finishing the edge of your crossing. So how do you decide how much to do L machining? The height is going to be equal to your seam allowance and the width is going to be the width of your crossing. So just stitch here on the blue line very neatly and then we take it further. Just give me a minute while I sew it up. So here you can see that I have completed the L machining on both the sides. Coincidentally, I used a blue pen for marking and I have also used a blue thread for sewing. But if you can see this clearly, I have taken back stitches here and not just plain running stitch because I wouldn't want this to open up before I attach my collar and finish my neckline. So after you have done this sewing, I am going to give a notch and cut out the extra fabric. So what am I cutting and how am I cutting? So if you see here, I have given a notch parallel to my stitching line, ended just before my stitching line. And I am going to cut out a complete L from here. So this is why it is known as a L machining. Let me cut it out from the other side also and turn it around to show you how it turns out once we finish it. See, there's a tiny bit remaining here. I'm being careful because I wouldn't want to cut extra. Now, once the cutting has been done, just simply hold it neatly and turn it inside out. Now, when you turn it inside out, you can use a sharp object like maybe one side of your scissor and poke out the edge. And you can see this. The facing has automatically turned on to the wrong side and the top edge where the collar is not going to be seen. This is where the fasteners come in. So this edge is also finished very, very neatly. Let's repeat it on the other side so that you get a recap. So this is after the L cutting is done. I turn it inside out. Now when I turn it inside out, the facing is automatically going to the other side. Take one edge of your scissor and just poke it out gently. Flatten it in place and iron it once to get a neat finish. After completing the L machining, I am folding it at center front line and placing both the L machinings, both the shoulder seams in line and placing them together. Why do I need to do this? I, if you remember in the previous video, I had mentioned that we will check and confirm the neck measurement once we complete our shoulder sewing. So now is the time. Now what I am doing is I am going to place the thread and in line, now see this, it is right in line with the edge of the L machining and I am placing it in line with my seam allowance and I am measuring exactly the length of the collar that is needed for my template. So this is the measurement. I'm going to place this on a scale and I'm going to take the measurement very precisely. So here the measurement is 13.2 centimeters. So now I am going to rework on my draft and make a fresh one on the basis of this measurement so that it fits correctly on the next shape. 
please hold on while i do it all right so for the cutting of the collar i am folding this if you can notice this is the cell which i am folding it at an angle of 45 degrees and then i need a double fold so i am folding it and then folding it again diagonally so i get one fold here and i get two edges which are folded here so this is one fold and this is one fold now let's just take a look at the draft it says foc and foc so i am going to place the draft like so and leave 1 cm seam allowance on the open sides both the open sides and i am going to cut it out so let's get started with the cutting if you make your thing so this is what it looks like after completing the cutting now i am removing the draft out and this is my actual collar edge now if you can see it stretches so it will turn around the shape of the neck and fit really beautifully now with the printed fabric you can identify the right side and the wrong side very easily i'm turning it to the wrong side that is right side facing right side and i'm going to stitch it right here at 1 cm distance to complete or to finish the outer edge so here you can see i have completed the sewing on both the side seams and i am going to give a notch at the corner trim the seam a little and i'm going to turn it inside out and like we did earlier for the l machining you can just push inside one edge to get a sharper edge of the collar outside the collar is now ready to be attached onto the garment or on the body template let's get started with that now we are going to place it right side facing right side and start with the entire attachment so as you can see the french seam is not visible here the facing is also on the wrong side so i am going to place it in line with the l machining like so and i am going to start uh, stitching it at 1 cm distance to judge whether the collar is going to be correct in size or not you can simply place half the collar around the entire edge and check the size of the collar so as you can see it fits in correctly so you can start tacking it and stitching it at 1 cm distance right side facing right side so i am opening it and i am beginning with the stitching so i'm placing it in line now i am separating out the two layers and then i am holding only one layer of the collar and i am attaching it in position so as you see this is just a single layer of the collar along with the back i am starting at center back in line with where the l machining is and i will start stitching the entire collar in position now when you reach the shoulder seam you need to remember that the shoulder has to be the seam at the shoulder has to be turned towards the back it should not be kept at the front else it will add a lot of bulk on the garment just stitch it continuously slowly and neatly if you're doing machine stitching tack it first with basting stitches and then stitch it in place so here you can see i have started stitching at one side in line with the l machining and i have attached a single layer of the collar on the body piece ensuring that there are no pleats on any position and i have ended again in line with the l machining and ensured that the collar matches edge to edge now once you have done that 
you simply need to push the entire seam inside the collar like so fold the raw edge of the second layer of the collar inside like this and very neatly you need to complete it with slip stitch along with your previous sewing line so whether you have done hand stitching or machine stitches complete your slip stitch along with the machine stitches so here the complete slip stitch has been done and if you can see it from the right side it automatically stands in position very very neatly now we are just going to fold it down from the shoulder the way it is supposed to be in a garment and on the wrong side you will attach a fastener over the crossing in the center of the crossing so that it stays in position and that is all that we have for your polo collar fundamental thank you so much have a great day